Hey everyone, Maya here from My Storybook and welcome back to today's interactive read aloud. Today I have a very inspirational story for us written by Stacy Abrams. Now my friend Stacy Abrams wrote a book about herself inspired by her own childhood and Stacy Abrams is actually a very important person. Yep. If you want to take a look back here, this is actually what Stacey Abrams looks like. And Stacey Abrams is a political leader in the United States, meaning that she helps to create laws and rules for everyone. And she's also a voting rights activist, meaning that she really works hard to make sure that everyone has the right to vote, especially black communities in America. So her current job is to really fight for voting rights and to be a leader in the political sphere to make sure that we have fair and equal and just laws for everyone. Now, she wrote a book about the power of words, how interesting words can be, how extraordinary words can be, how curious they can make you, and how powerful they are to make a difference and to affect how you feel and how others feel and how they can really be used to create change. Now, this story is about a little girl, young Stacy. Again, it's based on her childhood and Stacy's going to go to a spelling bee. Oh, do you know what a spelling bee is? A spelling bee is like a spelling contest where a person gives you different words to spell and you take turns spelling the words. And if you spell it right, you get to move on. And whoever spells the most words right without getting any wrong wins. So Stacy really loves words. And this is something that happened in her childhood as well. Now, my friends, do you like spelling? Can you spell your name? How about that one? That one's not too hard. Well, here, this is a big word, extraordinary. Without looking, can you spell extraordinary? That's a hard one, right? All right, well, my friends, double thumbs up if you're ready to get started. Excellent, let's begin. The title of today's interactive read aloud is Stacy's Extraordinary Words, written by Stacy Abrams herself and illustrated by Kit Thomas. So Stacey Abrams wrote all the words in this story, all the extraordinary words in this story. And Kit Thomas is the one who drew all of the pictures. So what do you notice on the cover here, my friends? You see the young girl. This must be Stacey. She's got some pigtails. Look, I got pigtails too, right? Got little bows in hers. And how does she feel? She looks really excited, confident. And you notice that she is Standing in front of a microphone, she has a number on her, number 19. Hmm. So when you do a spelling bee contest, they give you a number so that they know like how many people are in the contest. She was number 19 and she, it looks like she's on stage and it's her turn to spell a word. Hmm. All right. Well, let's find out what's going on with Stacey's Extraordinary Words. You're going to hear a lot of extraordinary big words, different words in this book, my friends. And while we're reading, I want you to... Keep an ear out listening for some extraordinary words that you really like. And maybe you can even get out a notepad or a journal and write down some of the extraordinary words that you hear. We're going to be talking about all different sorts of words. And if you stay tuned to the end, there'll even be an activity where you can make your own extraordinary words notebook, kind of like Stacy does in the book. But we'll get to that. All right, here's our title page, Stacy's Extraordinary Words by Stacy Abrams, our illustrator and our publisher, Harper Kids. Stacy loved words. Oh, me too. She loved to read and write and say them. She adored fun words, long words, unusual words, words with wonderful histories and weird combinations. All different types of words, my friends. Is there a fun word you really like? Whenever Stacy learned a new word, it was like making a new friend. First, she would find the dictionary. Do you know what a dictionary is? A dictionary is a book that has all the words in it and tells you what each word means. Because sometimes you hear a word and you don't know what it is, right? Like, pretend you didn't know what dictionary was. You can find a dictionary, look up the word dictionary, and it'll tell you if a dictionary is a book with all the words and what they mean. Hmm. Then she would look up where the word had come from and learn its secrets. Did any of its letters hide and stay quiet? Like the P in Ptarmigan, a bird that lives in the cold northern regions? Or were they strong like the I in Bright? So letters can make all different sorts of sounds and words, right? Next, she wrote the word in her special notebook of extraordinary words. 
She practiced how to arrange the letters just right, how to sound them out. That's because she loves spelling interesting words most of all. So she loves spelling different words. And what do you notice in her journal over here? Is all they just different words. She writes them down. She highlights them. Then she practices writing them. <gasps> I see here in these bubbles some words that she likes. This is onomatopoeia. <gasps> oh, onomatopoeia is any sound words like woof, woof. It's the sound of a dog. It's an onomatopoeia. So what would be an onomatopoeia of a cat? What sound would a cat make? Meow. Meow, meow. Oh, but speaking of cat. With her favorite word, she would try to remember their quirks, what made them special. When she saw a super old word like onomatopoeia, a funny word to describe the sounds of other words, she had to jump and sway. Words like duckling made her grin. Duckling. My friends, can you say duckling? <laughs> Duckling, it does kind of make me smile. And persnickety tickled her tongue. Persnickety. My friends, try that. Three, two, one. Persnickety. Sometimes Stacy thought that words understood her better than people did. When she sat by herself during recess, they never teased her about being quiet or about being clumsy when she fell or awkward when the joke in her head came out wrong. Does it sound like Stacy has many friends? What makes you think that? She's sitting on her own, reading her book, and it sounds like there's a lot of things that happen and she gets teased a lot, right? But words never tease her. When she read books under the covers, words never told her to go to sleep. Words understood why she was grumpy or anxious. In fact, words helped her explain what she was feeling, if only to herself. There's lots of feeling words that can help you express yourself. How are you feeling today, my friend? One day, Stacy's teacher, Mrs. Blakesley, Asked her to wait after class. She squirmed in her seat because she was afraid. So squirmed means like shaking a little bit. My friends, can you squirm? <laughs> petrified. Another way to say really, really afraid. She was petrified. Usually the teacher only kept a student after class because of a blunder. A mistake. So many new words in this book. Mrs. Blakesley called Stacy to her desk and she returned her spelling test. A big red 100 sat at the top of the page. She got them all right. The teacher asked her, do you know what a spelling bee is? A really smart insect, Stacy joked, like a bee that can spell. <laughs> the teacher smiled. A spelling bee is a contest where students compete to spell as many words correctly as they can. I would like you to participate. Stacy couldn't believe it. Who else will be there? I am nominating you and Jake. The spelling bee is next week. So the teacher picked Stacy to be in the spelling bee. Why did the teacher pick her? She did so well on her spelling test, and she probably notices that Stacy really loves words and spelling them. Hmm, what's going on here? I don't know. This person doesn't look too friendly because they don't look too happy after he's leaving them. Stacy's excitement suddenly evaporated. <gasps> Jake was not her friend. He was a bully who knew words too. Just yesterday, he had used a complicated word that made Suki cry. Last week, she heard him say something cruel to Zifko about his accent. Stacy thought it was stupendous that Zifko knew words in two different languages. Oh, so it sounds like Jake teases other people. He uses his words to make other people upset and sad. Stacy knew as many words as Jake did. She wanted to say something when he said mean things to her friends, but she was intimidated, scared. Because sometimes he said hurtful things to her, too. What can you do, my friends, if there's someone saying really hurtful things? You can tell them to stop, right? But sometimes, like Stacy said, it's scary to stand up to someone. She wished she had used her clever words to help Suki or Zifko or herself by speaking up. Perhaps at the spelling bee, she would be braver. At the spelling bee, she would not be silent. She's hoping on the spelling bee, I can stand up to Jake. All week long, Stacy studied her spelling words from school and the one she kept in her notebook, sesquipedalian, sesquipedalian. Oh, so many big words. Still, the spelling bee felt as far away as the longest word she had ever seen, sesquipedalian, a fancy way to describe words with lots of syllables. So syllables are the parts of words. The days of the week were monotonous. They went by so slowly, torturous, and sluggish. Every hour felt longer and longer. Torturous, monotonous, sluggish. So slow. My friends, try saying this. Tortuous. Monotonous. Sluggish.
Stacy wished for the week to whisk its days away. Have you ever felt like that, my friends, where you just want time to go by really fast, but then the days go by so slow? What were you really waiting for to happen and time just kept going so slow? Finally, the morning of the spelling bee arrived. Stacy walked into the county library with her mother holding her hand tight. Mama gave her a big hug and whispered into her ear, Just do your best. Your dad and I are very proud of you. Stacy followed her teacher to the room where the other students waited until it was time to go. They went onto a stage. The announcer explained the rules. Kids stepped up to the microphone one by one to get their word. If they spelled it right, the announcer told them so. But if they made a mistake, a bell would ring and the student would have to leave the stage. No do-overs. So my friends, if you accidentally spell one word wrong, do you get a second chance? You only get one chance if you mess up then. Sorry, you're out of this spelling bee. Stacy's turn finally came. Her stomach ached with nervous energy, but she was ready. Say the word. Dither. Sound it out. Dither. Spell it. D-I-T-H-E-R. Dither. Oh, so maybe that's her strategy. Say the word, sound it out, then spell it. D-I-T-H-E-R. There she is spelling it. And you think that's correct? That is correct! The announcer called on the next student and the next. Promptly, enormous, shutter, transportation, craggy, reception, village. Finally, only three contestants remained. Only three more people were in the contest. <gasps> Looks like Stacy's one of them. And Jake. Stacy and Jake and a girl from another school. The girl went up to spell her word. Ding! She had spelled chocolate without the second O. Uh-oh. So who's left? Just Stacy and Jake. Who do you think's going to win, my friends? We are down to our final two contestants, the announcer told the audience. Jake took a long time to spell accept. Accept. E-X-C-E-P-T. There's a silent C in there. Stacy got squeezed, but she remembered the lost letters she adored, like Q and Z, squeezed. Jake tackled clambering. So here they are trying to spell the different words. Except, squeezed, clambering, and last one over here. Stacy conquered disengage. Then Jake defeated geometry. Stacy returned to the podium ready to do battle with her next word. She repeated it. She pronounced it. She spelled it. Instantane, I-N-S-T-A-N-T-A-N-I-O-U-S, instantaneous. <gasps> Do you think you got it right? Uh-oh, what happened? Oh no, it looks like Jake won. As she waited for the announcer, the bell dinged. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The proper spelling is... But Stacy couldn't hear the rest of what he said. Tears filled her eyes, but she stayed on stage like a good sport as Jake got his trophy and she received her second place ribbon prize. Everyone congratulated Jake, and so did she. So even though she lost, it seems like she was she's still nice to Jake, right? Because he did win fair and square. He was he spelled more words than her correctly. Good job, she said. And what does Jake do when she says good job? What is this? Ha! He says. Jake laughed and rolled his eyes. Oh my. At least I know the difference between I and E, he said, because when she spelled instantaneous, she spelled it with an I instead of an E at the end. Is that very kind of Jake to say? What could Jake have said that would have been nicer? Now, like, oh, nice try, Stacy. That was really fun competing and. You did a really great job spelling. Stacy felt embarrassed, but she refused to let Jake make her cry. Well, I misspelled my word, but I know how to be courteous. You should try it. So courteous means polite and respectful. How does Jake feel when she tells her that? She's like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, so maybe I couldn't spell it, but at least I am polite and respectful. She turned away and went to find her mom. So it really sounds like she used her words to stand up for herself, right? If today were like one of the stories Stacy loved most, she would have one. And Jake would have learned that words were a gift that shouldn't be used to hurt people. But things didn't always happen that way in real life. Sometimes change was harder, and it didn't happen right away. Stacy felt a hand brush at her cheek. It opened her fist and smoothed out the ribbon. Mama, she put a butterscotch candy on top, Stacy's favorite kind. You okay? Mama asked. So Stacy's saying, you know what? 
in a happy ending story, she would have won. Jake would have learned his lesson that words shouldn't be used to hurt others. But that doesn't always happen, right? The, the good person doesn't always win. But that does that mean you give up? No, that means, like Stacey says, you just keep trying. Change takes a long time. Jake's not going to change all in one day. And she's going to have to keep standing up for herself and others. I lost, Stacy said. But you came so far, nearly to the very end. Not far enough. I got the letter wrong and I didn't win. I failed. You only fail if you stop, her mother reminded her. I know there's a word for that. You know it too. Stacy thought about one of her favorite words. Perseverance. P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E -E. Perseverance, my friends. Can you say perseverance? Perseverance means never give up. You keep on trying no matter what, my friends. What is something that you persevere at? You keep on trying and never give up at. Excellent. Exactly. So let's go home and learn more words. There's always next year. So Stacy's going to persevere. And she's just going to keep on studying, learning more words. Because next year there's another spelling bee. Stacy imagined all the words she had yet to meet, new words and new ways to speak up and help others. She'd find them all. No, Mama, there's always tomorrow. It's almost like there's always next year for this spelling bee, but Stacy's like, no, next year's too far away. We can start making change and making a difference tomorrow. Start learning tomorrow. And my friends, this shows us what Stacy, how Stacy grows up, how she grows up to use her words. To make a difference, to stand up for people now. When she was younger, she was a little scared to stand up for others. But now, she uses her powerful words. Stacey Abrams is such a powerful speaker. She uses such powerful words to speak up for people, to speak up for the black community, and to make sure that everyone gets their voting rights and is treated equally and fairly and justly. She really learned how to use her words to make a difference, and she's still doing it, my friends, every day. He and so here, Stacey Abrams writes a little bit more about her story. If you want to pause and take a quick read of it. <laughs> Otherwise, my friends, that brings us to the end of today's interactive read aloud. I hope you enjoyed this inspirational story and learned some extraordinary new words. What was one of your favorite parts or one of your favorite new words that you learned? Wow, right? So amazing. I really liked that word persnickety and I love the word perseverance at the end. Never give up. So my friends, this book encourages you to persevere, to use your words, to stand up for others and to stand up for what you believe in. All right. And always and never give up. Persevere. Okay, my friends, if you'd like to make your own notebook of extraordinary words, just like Stacy, and write down some of your favorite words that tickle your tongue or make you smile or that inspire you, go ahead and check out my blog for a craft template to make your own extraordinary words notebook activity. Otherwise, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's interactive read aloud. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my storybook YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button. I would love to hear about your own extraordinary words that you find and collect, my friends. So if you want to reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, on the blog, email, all the social media links can be found down there below. Otherwise, my friends, until next time, happy reading.